Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I am out traveling away from my studio. You might hear some background noises, but I still wanted to geek out and have some fun creating some more tutorials. In this one, we're gonna be taking a look at transparent headers with Elementor. When it comes to building headers and other sections inside of Elementor, there are different methods that we could use to get the same results. And for transparent headers, I have two methods. Now, one of them, the negative margins, that's been a method that I have been using since I've been building Elementor websites. But recently, I've switched to a new method, which I found to be a lot easier and a lot faster, and that is using position absolute. And then after I show you how to make your header transparent and lay on top of your banner, for all those that are new to Elementor, I will show you how I built this header and menu right here. All right, let's check it out. And here's our menu before it is transparent. Now you're gonna notice that it's a purple background and that is only because I went here to the site settings and I changed the background to purple. This way we could actually see it because I'm gonna be using white text. That way it shows on top of the banner. So let me leave it purple for now. Okay, first step that you need to do for either method, all right, we're gonna to have to set everything up. And whether you're gonna be using the negative margins or position absolute, we're gonna do the same thing. Go over here to the container that is wrapping the header that is gonna overlay on top of your banner. Then you're gonna go over here to advance, over to Z index, and give it at least a 10, or you could be extra safe and just give it 100. The higher the Z index, well, that means that it's gonna be on top of anything that is lower. So your banner is gonna start off at a one. So the 100 will go on top. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is go over to your style and go to your colors and make sure you have a transparent color. Now you might be using global colors like this. You could just go to any one of your colors. I'll go to a primary and then just move the slider all the way down to zero, then it is transparent. Next up, let's take a look at the negative margin option. So you go over here to advance and to the bottom, and you're gonna use a negative margin, and you're literally going to pull up the content. And that's what margins do, they push and they pull. That is the difference between margins and paddings. Paddings, they add padding around the element where the margin pushes and pulls the element. This is usually around 70 to 80 or 90, right around there. So you would find the amount of pixels that is going to be flush right here to the top. If you do this right here inside of your header and pull it up, it's going to pull up on all of the pages. So you might not want to do this inside of your header. In fact, I wouldn't do it inside of the header. Instead, let me save this and let's go to our page. And you can do this page by page because some pages, you're going to want this to overlay on top of your banner and then some pages you're going to want this to be on top of your banner and that is where this option is really useful so i'm going to go over here to my home page right here this is a home page banner and okay i got to use my navigator so you're going to have to use a navigator a lot uh but yeah let's go here to the navigator and i'm going to go over here to advance and this is my container for my banner and then here, I'm gonna pull it up from the top. Let me unlink that. And we're going to pull, you're pretty much pulling the header down over your banner. And that is your first method right here. But I got a better method to show you, one that I've started using. So let me undo this. Let's go ahead and update this. And I'm gonna go back over to my header. I'm gonna go back over to the container wrapping the menu in advance and I'm going to go over here to position and I'm going to switch it to absolute. When it's on absolute, just make sure that it's on the top right here and that is by default. So we got a position absolute, vertical orientation to the top and a Z index at least of 10 or 100. And that is it when we're using position absolute for our transparent headers. Now sometimes you might wanna put another top bar like what I have here. And sometimes you need to make some adjustments too. If you find that it is not aligned, maybe it is being pushed down or it isn't covering the banner enough, well then you could go here to your vertical orientation and you could adjust this here, you could pull it down, 
or pull it up. And then you're going to want to check in the front end to make sure that everything is aligned and flushed. But most of the time I find when I leave this empty that it is right where I need it to be. But if not, it looks off on your end. This is what you want to adjust. Now, this is a great method if you are going to be using this type of header across all of your pages. But if you're only going to have some pages with transparent headers and some with more traditional headers that are stacked on top of your banner, you might want to use either the negative margin and control the front end right here on the banner, or you might want to create two different menus or two different headers and then control them with the display conditions because you could create multiple conditions. You could create the pages you're going to exclude and the pages you're going to include. And that is it. Now, for anybody brand new to Elementor, I want to throw in a little bonus right here and show you how I built this header. I'm going to delete these. For this, I am going to use containers. I don't use the sections anymore. Containers are much better. So let me show you how I do this with containers, with the Flexbox containers. All right, uh, I'm going to use the first one direction to the right. Let me set up my padding. I am going to change this to rim and let me just put in one on top, one on bottom. And then on the right and left, I'm going to do two. And I am going to keep my paddings, my right and left paddings, always the same throughout the entire site. That's how we keep a clean layout. Now I'm going to set up my background right here. You could put in whatever color you're going to use and let me add in a heading. I am going to change this to a span and let me copy and paste this right here. And I just put in some dummy text. All right. And let's go ahead and style this up. So I'm going to center this. I am going to change the color to my black and then I have my presets right here. I'm going to do this button text small. I think it's going to fit a lot better or I could do medium. Let me see here. I'll go ahead and do button text medium, make it a little big so it stands out. And then here inside of the container, I'm going to click on the container, go to layout. And this is where I'm going to fix the positioning inside of my container. I'm going to put justify zero. I'm also going to align everything inside the center. Now let's create a new one. And again, I am going to use the same container pointing to the right. Let me move this under and let's add the padding. I'm going to change this to rem. I've switched over to RAM for all of my paddings, and that is because it is better for accessibility. I got more videos on that coming out, especially about how RAM and Pixel and where to use them and how they really make a difference. I got something planned for that, so you know, make sure to subscribe so you get notified that good YouTube stuff. All right, I'm gonna change this to 1.5, and same thing here, 1.5. All right. Now for the background, I do want to make that transparent background. So I am going to, I got a background color right here that I'm going to use for this design, but I'm going to take this all the way down to transparency. Now let's add in our elements. I'm going to add in an image. You could use the image or logo widget, totally your choice. I'm going to move this to full. And that is because I have an SVG. So it doesn't matter because it is only 4KB, which is micro sized. Okay. And then let's change the size on this. I do use pixels for my width for a small image like this. And I'm going to change this to 140 pixels. Next up, I'm going to add the WordPress menu widget. That's this one right here. This is a great widget, especially for SEO, but we got to set it up because out the box, you see it's set up weird. This is an older widget by Elementor that really hasn't gone through changes. So we got to do a few things. First off, remove this pointer, take that off right there. So we don't get that weird hover pointer. We don't need that. Next up, we need to change our breakpoints. If you are going to change it, I'm going to leave it on tablet mode, but I'm going to switch this to full width. Uh, we're going to come back to all this when we do our mobile menu. Let's set it up for desktop first. Let's go over here to style. 
and we need to remove this default padding because by default when we do have the padding here let me let me open this all the way up this is a reason why i would never use this horizontal padding when you use it we're getting this padding on the sides right here on the right and left so it'll never be flushed with the content and it's always going to be off and even though this looks like just a little bit right here it still breaks the design and this was this is what makes it not so clean this should not be used so take this all the way down to zero same thing with the vertical padding we don't need this top and this top and bottom padding it is not needed right here we're going to control all this with our flex this is what we need to use the space between this is the right way to style this up so let's go ahead and open it up you could use pixel you could use ram i am using rim for this let me change this to i'm going to change it to uh, four is kind of big but i'll leave it there all right now let's go ahead and style this up i already have a text for this and let me add my color i feel this is a little bit too big right here and might get bogged down when it comes to mobile so i'm going to change this to a smaller button size okay we'll use that and test it out that's what i had here and I am going to reduce the size of this. Let me change it to uh, 2.5. Okay. Do you know what? I'm just going to put it at a 3. And since I have no drop downs, I'm just going to leave the drop down menu as it is. If you are going to build a drop down, then you're going to want to go through this and style it up. Now, if you are going to style the drop down, you would want to adjust your horizontal and vertical padding and make sure that it looks fine. This is okay for horizontal and vertical padding, but for the main menu, it is not okay. Don't use this for the main menu. Because you see right here, it is flushed with the pink box. That's what we want. We want our content flushed with this pink box. Now we got the spacing on the bottom, and that is only because it is adjusting to the height of our image. So we gotta fix our contents in the middle of our container. Go to your outer container, this is where we go back to our flex controls and we adjust it here. Now, first we align it to the center and now you can see that pink box is wrapping perfectly around our menu. Let's go back to the container and from here, we are going to set this at a space between. It's going to push the content all the way over to the right. And that is it for the desktop menu. Now to make it mobile, let's go over here to our responsive mode. And I'm going to set this up in tablet portrait. And then we can see it right here. Let's go to content. This is the reason why we put full width. If you don't put full width, you get this. So you have to have it at full width. And then over here, you got the option to set up your own icons. I'll let you do that. I'm just going to use the default Elementor icons right here. But we still got to change some things. So let's go ahead and change the drop down, the drop down here. And we need to change the distance because you can see by default it is really close to it's really close to the, the the logo right here it is on top of our menu bar so we got to move it down and you can see the little space right here so i like to keep it flushed let's take it down a couple more pixels so right about here 28 pixels seems like a really good sweet spot now let's fix our horizontal and vertical padding in fact the horizontal looks good let's just do the vertical so we get more space right here all right i'm gonna put it let's put it at 16 pixels and then i uh, let's set up our typography i want it to be a bit uh, bigger here because on um, when we do use our phones things tend to be smaller on the phones so set it up here after you've set it up test it out on your phone and actually see how that menu looks like and then let's style up our toggle we're going to change the color to white and we don't need a background i'm going to leave it alone i don't really see a need for that and we can make it a little bit bigger i'm going to change this to 24 and now we got our mobile menu we could take it to mobile size and our menu is completed and now the next steps that we would do is just making this a transparent header which is going back over here to advance you could either use a negative margin uh, method or you go here to position absolute 
change your Z index to 100 and then go to your offset right here and remove this zero because you see when you do have the zero we got that top bar going on top it's starting to to overlay so just remove that and there you go they're going to be flush right on top of each other update it and we got a menu created in just a few minutes and that is it for this video what's your favorite method for creating your transparent headers drop it inside the comments and if you got another method let us know tell us how you do it inside of the comments well that's it wait i almost forgot can't forget that good YouTube stuff. You know what is up. Like and subscribe. It does help to support this channel. And it is greatly, greatly appreciated. All right. I'll see you inside the next one. Thank you.